Microsoft launches a huge number of new AI updates. Google is bringing AI to ads and creative. And Anthropic has raised $450 million in its quest to build the best chatbot. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in five minutes or less. And today we are kicking off with Microsoft Build. This is their annual developer conference, so their equivalent of Google's I.O., which was obviously a couple weeks ago. And not surprisingly, AI was the absolute centerpiece of pretty much everything they announced. And let's start right at the top with the biggest announcement, which is that Windows 11 is going completely fully AI. The type of co-pilot experience that Microsoft debuted with GitHub is now coming across the entire Windows 11 experience. They write, we're introducing Windows Copilot, making Windows 11 the first PC platform to announce centralized AI assistance. We are extending Bing Chat plugins to Windows. We are introducing new hybrid AI loop to support AI development across platforms. We're introducing a new dev home designed to help every developer become more productive. And we're introducing new AI features and experiences in the Microsoft Store on Windows. Now, the thing that many people are pointing out as the most significant is this idea of Copilot now just being a centralized feature of an operating system, right? This is the first experience that people have when they interact with their computers is whatever the operating system puts in front of them. So by putting AI and Copilot directly in the Windows 11 experience, Microsoft is betting that this is going to transform how not just developers and not just how people on the edge, but how everyone interacts with computers in the future. You probably need a robot who are admittedly sometimes prone to hyperbole, says the biggest news in AI all year, famous last words, Microsoft unveils an entire operating system. Say hello to Windows 11, the ultimate productivity tool, and here's why that matters. With Windows Copilot, a centralized AI assistant is native on every Windows computer at the operating system level. Access all local files, universally available across the system. Lowers the barriers for adoption for onboarding new users to AI. Game changer. Now, the other big thing, I think, from this announcement is that the partnership between Microsoft and OpenAI is getting even closer in terms of how the average person experiences it. And what that looks like now is that OpenAI's ChatGPT is now going to have Bing as the default search experience. Now, you might say, well, of course they will. They've had this big partnership with Microsoft. But the important detail here is that the browsing feature of ChatGPT, which is obviously a huge, huge update for ChatGPT, now giving it access to the current internet, not just the data set that it was trained on up to 2021, but the current internet, is now going to be available not just for Plus users, which it just came to over the last two weeks, but for all users. So Microsoft is giving the ability of regular free ChatGPT users to browse the web with Bing as part of their ChatGPT experience. So what were the other important announcements from the Build Conference? Well, as we've seen over and over and over, plugins are the big theme. And plugins, I think, are just shorthand for this period in AI computing in which developers are retrofitting their applications for an AI world, building the AI-powered version of their experiences, and effectively putting them in a new type of app store, but for the experiences where people are interacting with AI, such as Bing or ChatGPT. That's now being brought into the main PC experience alongside Windows 11's general AI integration. Microsoft also announced this new Dev Home, which is meant to be a better starting point for developers who are interacting with AI and put Microsoft right in the center of that development flow. Some smaller but still noteworthy announcements. They announced a new AI tool for building websites. This is one of a thousand AI website builders. I'm thinking of doing a video, by the way, comparing AI website building tools. If that's something that interests you, that type of comparison, please comment. And Microsoft has also launched something that's called Fabric, which people are comparing to the code interpreter plugin from ChatGPT that they are getting so excited about. Now, by and large, people have been very stoked on this announcement. The one counterpoint that I've seen comes from Sully Omar, who writes, just saw the Windows 11 AI co-pilot. I am now 100% convinced that Apple will eat Microsoft's lunch. He says, thread on this later, which has not come yet. But when it comes, if there are interesting points, I will be sure to share them. 
But of course, the big tech AI battle is hardly a one company race. And even on the same day that Microsoft was making all these announcements, Google had its own slate of announcements as well. A big emphasis for Google is bringing AI into their ad tools. And at their marketing live event today, they announced that they're launching Product Studio, which is a new tool that allows people to use generative AI to build better product shots for their brands and for the products that they're trying to sell. Some of the tools that will be available is enhancing images, increasing the resolution, changing different backgrounds. But then there's also going to be copywriting assistance as well with this sort of chat GPT style experience to help people write better copy that's going to presumably perform better with Google Ads. They even have a set of tools for video enhancement that, again, are all designed to help people perform better. And this is important because advertisers are probably the group that's the most worried about these tools in some ways, given how much it's likely to change about the experiences that they've designed their businesses around for the last 20 years. The other big Google announcement was that Bard is starting to include images as responses. This is something that we had seen promised, but it shows that Bard is kind of first out of the gate for these mainstream chatbots in terms of becoming more multimodal, not just responding in text, but figuring out what media is the right way to answer a particular query or question. Now, one could easily be forgiven for thinking that with all of these announcements from the big tech players and this absolute AI arms race going on, that there is really no room for startup innovation. But the startups in this space are not content to let that be true. Anthropic has announced a $450 million Series C raise led by Spark Capital that does have participation from Google, Salesforce, and others. And when I said at the beginning that they're trying to build the best chatbot, that's not exactly an accurate representation. They're trying with Claude to build not only the best chatbot, Bot, but the one that's designed to be the most ethical and the most safe. You'll remember that Anthropic is taking an approach that they call constitutional AI rather than reinforcement learning from human feedback, where they train AI on a set of ethical principles underlying the entire system so that it can make better decisions about how to respond in certain complicated or morally questionable situations. They say the funding will support our efforts to continue building AI products that people can rely on and generate new research about the opportunities and risks of AI. And lastly, one more startup experience that I am noticing more and more people get very excited about is called AirChat. Amjad, the CEO of Replit, says, I've had multi-day, multi-party nuanced conversations on AirChat, and it feels really different as a format from anything else out there. It unlocks something new. One of the company's co-founders is Naval Ravikant, and he writes, Social media isn't social, it's performative. Where's the chit-chat, the banter, the easy laughter? We made something new. Push to talk whenever you want with perfect transcripts and AI art. A dinner party in your pocket. Never feel alone again. Social media isn't social. It's performative. Where's the chit chat? The banter? The easy laughter? We made something new. Push to talk whenever you want with perfect transcripts and AI art. A dinner party in your pocket. Follow Get Air Chat and never feel alone again. That's a great question. Thanks, Luke. Hey, stranger. Tell us a little about yourself. Hi. Are you the wizard of air chat? Hey, I'm Arjun. I'm an air chat. Follow, get air chat, and never feel alone again. Early though it is, the reminder of things like air chat is that there is so much still to be discovered about what experiences feel like in this new world, in the new world that generative AI enables. Even with as many resources as they're throwing into it, it's madness to think that only Google or Microsoft or Meta are going to create the AI experiences of the future. So I called this video the way the next 100 million people come to AI. But was I talking about Windows 11 or was I talking about something like AirChat? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. That's it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. If you're enjoying the AI Breakdown, please like, subscribe, and share. Leave a comment about what you want to hear about or learn about next. Go listen to the podcast and the newsletter, and I'll be back soon for the main AI Breakdown.